on each of these platforms. Make sure they're all muted. All right, that one's muted. Good. That one is done. All right, cool. We are good. Hello, and welcome to Wise Guys Entertainment. This is your host, Wyman. Uh, we are joined today by the ace himself. <laughs> um, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Just uh, got off work a little bit ago. So oh, yeah? Yeah. Took a little bit of time to relax, and now I'm ready for uh, oh, to sweet. be out here. Yeah. Right on. Right on. Hip it to you. Um, so I was uh, um, Edwin Acevedo. Am I pronouncing your name right to begin with? Yeah, all right. So, um, Edwin, before we get into your project, uh, would you mind taking a moment and just giving us a little background? How you, uh, you know, what kinds of things you were into when you were younger? Um, how you even uh, learned the skills you have today, and how you eventually came to crowdfunding your own comics? Yeah. Uh so I'm um, basically a lifelong comic book fan. Uh, I grew up uh, reading, uh, first ever comic book was uh, uh, Uncanny X-Men 283. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> with and Bishop, yeah. Oh, with Bishop, really? Yeah, and then uh, so issue Spider-Man, the, the Foes of Spider-Man. Issue four was probably like the second issue I ever had. Uh, oh my gosh. So yeah, I, ever since I, I picked up those comics, man, I was hooked. Like it just completely, anytime I'd have any kind of spare money or any sort of allowance or something, I'd run down to the, cause uh, the place I used to get my comics at was this local corner store. They, oh, used, to have okay. a, they used to have a spinner rack. It was mostly Marvel. It was mostly like Spider-Man, X-Men. Then they'd have like random books like, uh, Dark Hawk and Sleepwalker, and then maybe like Green Lantern or Flash from DC. It was kind of like a mix and match, but uh, that's kind of like how I discovered it. I hadn't even had any idea for the longest time there were such things as comic book shops. I just, I just thought every, all the little corner stores had them. So yeah, that's how I fell in love. You know, I fell in love with the art, the characters. They were all bigger than life. They were what? all different and cool. Yeah. Were these like generic uh, corner stores or were they like specifically big chains like 7-Eleven? No, it was like a local owned, but it was like a, it was like a more like a liquor mart kind of. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so like back then, like those kind of stores would get like, they'd have like spinner racks and stuff. I kind of lucked out because like, it, was, it was like a couple of minutes away from my home. So I would always run down there every time I had money. And they, they, they for years had a pretty good like collection. Like it was a good, like probably like three to five years. Uh, that's so uh, that's the place where I would get them. And then, you know, the crash happened and everything. And then and all those places kind of lost their comics. But I was lucky, man. It was a really uh, great time. Yeah, it it was pretty cool. Uh, it, it still freaking amazes me, and it, it's also quite admirable how uh, people like you have the memory to recollect the exact the very the exact copy issue issue number of the the first <laughs> comic book you got i can't for the life yeah. of me remember what my very first one was <laughs> yeah i mean uh like i said it probably was a good couple months before i picked up any other ones so hmm. those two always stood out because i i've, I've reread them all the time like i because uh they, they were just like they were so new to me and like, you know, uh, both of those, uh, stories, uh, they took place, uh, like the, that, that X-Men issue was like a part three. And then the Spider-Man was a issue four. So I kind of had to like figure out what had happened beforehand. 
So so it was like, like the rereading them again and trying to figure out who these characters were and why they were fighting and all this stuff it was really interesting for like I did that for like months before. I picked up the 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 next issue, which was uh two I think a two eighty six by the time I read the, the next one. Mm. So yeah, it was kinda like on and off. I wasn't getting like the monthly every month kind of comics, you know. It would just kind of be like random. I'd pick up every third issue or something. Oh, okay. All right. So I had to like reread those issues a lot just to try and figure out what I had missed and stuff. Oh yeah. So yeah. Were you, were you the type of kid who uh, dug particular artists' uh, story? Oh yeah. Like, like Rose Portacio was my guy, man. Like though those the way he drew Bishop, the way he drew Storm. Archangel, it was absolutely incredible. Like those uncanny X Men issues. As much as I love the Jim Lee stuff, Will Wills was my my first guy that I was like, I would just look at the art for the longest time. Like I wouldn't even read it until like three or four <laughs> times I'd go over the art. Then I'd read it and it was really good. But like I said, I had to kind of piece it together, so I didn't get the full impact at first. It wasn't until later to uh, to like find like a, I started realizing, oh, these come out monthly. And then they come out this time, so I got to go and get the next issue this time. That was like a year or two after that I finally started to like figure out like, you know, oh, these are coming out monthly, and I gotta gotta go get it every month quickly before they sell out because they, they they weren't restocking them. You know, once they're gone from the spinner rack, they're gone. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So X Men, and then eventually after that was uh, McFarlane Spider Man. Oh, oh my god. The way he drew Mary Jane to me, like I was completely invested in their relationship. Peter and MJ were just like they—they they were like a real couple to me, like for years. Like they were just the reviews they got. So <laughs> those are incredible okay. things. Yeah. Uh, welcome, King Toe Comics, the Mothman. Yes. Hell, in the '80s, you could find comics everywhere. It was nice. Yeah. <laughs> Sure was. My collection was random as well. Today's kids can now get online and find out what happened on reviews and whatnot. Yeah. Well, it took me years to figure out the full, like, that that full, like, original storyline with Bishop. Because <laughs> 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 I had to track down, like, the issues, like, a couple years later, and I finally got to read, like, all of them. But, like, you're trying, you know, if you missed an issue, like, Spider-Man, you know, he was doing crossovers. And then sometimes they wouldn't get the, the book, you know, Spider-Man would cross over Ghost Rider. We didn't get Ghost Rider. Mm -hmm. So like I had no idea what happened. I had to like <laughs> to like later on. I'm like, oh, I remember this crossover. I finally read the Ghost Rider crossover, the Spider Man, the, like from like two years ago. Yeah, true. So <laughs> yeah, it's a whole different kind of appreciation for it. Yeah, I like the ability to do. Uh, I mean, I, I liked when they did do uh, include references in the dialogue, like. Your, a couple characters might have be having a discussion and then you'll see an asterisk and then you, you, it takes your eye to the bottom of the page and it says see such and such issue uh, number or whatever and uh, it helped you try and follow along with the uh, you know the crossover events I mean yeah, of course that it, it was big of course, it didn't necessarily help me that much because I didn't always go pick up <laughs> other co comics that they were pointing back to. But the very fact that they try to create this cohesive universe um, and have a particular timeline that everyone is following was pretty impressive. Yeah, definitely. King Toad says a lot more trades these days as well. Didn't have those much back then. So, oh, shoot, I'm sorry. Oh, crap. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. Um, yeah. So, you were in the comics as a kid, and then um, you. Yeah, like, I, I stayed like a, as a comic book fan. I basically collected them for for years, really. You know, it's like when I, when I was like in middle school and going to high school, you know, my dream was to be an artist. You know, oh, I, wanted to, I wanted to go to the Kubert school and all that kind of stuff, but sadly, I had no artistic talent at all. <laughs> oh. so I 
kind of find out, sadly, you know, it wasn't meant to be. So, but yeah, man, like I've always loved comics, uh, you know, but then it kind of got to like around like the 2000s and it just kind of, there was a lot of changes in Marvel and DC had kind of fallen off. And, uh, you know, by like early 2000s, there's really nothing for me to really get invested in. So that's kind of when like uh, I stopped for like five years until like 2005 when uh, when Jeff Johns did uh, Green Lantern Rebirth. Oh, I kind of re-sparked back for uh, for for comic books, because uh, during that time, you know, after like originally discovering X-Men, Spider-Man, all those, then I started to discover like DC characters, The Flash, Green Lantern, Justice League. Those were like my favorites. So, you know, that was like a whole other kind of area that that kind of got discovered for me for for a couple of years. So it's always wow. been like a trade-off, you know, like I'd be heavy into Marvel and then when Marvel kind of falls off, go into DC and then when DC falls off, you go back to Marvel. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like that game you used to play with uh, uh, internet or TV, cable TV providers. Like, uh, you know, as soon, as soon as you get your promotional rate through DirecTV for the year, uh, then you threaten to switch to another one if they won't um, stick to the current payment plan. Then you jump to Spectrum or you jump to... Uh, Comcast or what have you, and then you eventually end up back in the beginning, and <laughs> whoever has the smallest one, uh, cheapest price. I mean, welcome, flipped out. Good to have you. Hey, wise guys. Um, so even though you felt you didn't have the artistic talent, uh, you said. Uh, I mean, were you the type of kid who also like uh, took out some paper and tried to draw the characters you saw in the comic books? Oh yeah, like uh, you know, I tried to follow like the Wizard magazine. They do the little artist drawing and stuff, but yeah, it just wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't pretty. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like I joke around. It's funny. Like I talked to all of my artist friends, and they're like, "No, man, you gotta." You gotta learn how to be an artist, man. Anybody can learn. I'm like, brother, <laughs> I spent my life trying to <laughs> learn how to draw an artist. It, it, it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> you know, it's like you gotta realize that. You know. <laughs> but yeah, like, I, go ahead. Yeah, during that time, you know, I've also like would kind of write my own little kind of mini comic book stories and stuff. I had all these rip off characters. When I was like a teenager, I was like doing like uh, I had this character called Inferno. It was like a like a cross between like Human Torch and like uh, Sunfire. Okay, all right. <laughs> and then like had this guy called Blaster who shot uh, beams from his hands. <laughs> beams, <laughs> like uh, energy beams. Oh, beams. Okay, all right. Yeah. So you know, it's just like funny stuff like that. You know, when you're like wow. a you're like a very young kid and you're just like coming up with like these little short stories I would do. Oh, so nice. it was, it was just kind of fun. Kind of just, I would do them for myself and then draw, draw like a little kind of layout, but really bad layout. Which you, if you saw them, like I, I looked back at them, I don't have them anymore because I lost everything in a fire in the early 2000s. Oh, damn. Like all, like all my comics that I had collected, from the nineties, uh, box after box after box of like all the the nineties comics that I bought, they're they're all gone. So oh no! Oh man! It was a funny thing is like it wasn't probably like around like the last five, probably five years that I started to like recollect a lot of them. Like I went back and collected a bunch of like the old Dark Hawk, the first twenty five. I, I a couple years ago I picked up the whole Will Sportatio on Kenny X Men run, the Jim Lee original 91 x-men run like it but it hasn't been until recently because like back then like you know it's like early 2000s and i had stopped collecting and then the fire happens and then you're like well i'm not reading comic books <laughs> so you know it sucks that i lost all those that i liked but i mean life moves on and then when i went back i was only collecting dc comics so there was no reason for me to get like <laughs> the old marvel comics so like it wasn't for like probably like five years ago Till I really decided to just like, you know, I should just like get them again, you know, see if I can track them down just for like my own personal, like 
So I've started to like recollect them again. It's been a lot of fun, man. Like going through some of the old issues again. It's been a oh my god. It must have been like a blast from the past, eh? Yeah, definitely. Like I just uh I picked up some like old Death's Head issues like uh -huh. from eBay like uh, a couple months ago. Just rereading that and just like it just took me all the way back to like the early nineties and stuff. Just how fun and like uh interesting all these characters were and that's kinda like that's really the inspiration, you know, like when I started working on this, I just wanted to kind of like rebring a lot of those same kind of weird, smaller books back, you know, because I feel like those have been missing for a long time. Mm. So this is kind of like my idea, like, you know, I'm not no, no professional writer or anything like that, but uh, I have read tons and tons of comic books. I think I know what makes a good comic book. I think I know how to, I think I know, you know, how to, how to voice a character, you know, because I always used to like, see them in my head in a, in a certain way like you know before like the x-men animated series like i had wolverine's voice in my head you know, when i'm reading when i when i'm reading wolverine like i, I gave him a voice like i like a, he was like a, a specific character and it's kind of amazing when like when i saw the animated shows you're like a lot of these guys love the voices and stuff are kind of similar to what they did in the animated because because hmm. there's something about the 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 characters were written so well that they became so real that w when you see them you know it's it's really it's really kind of like an interesting kind of uh when when characters are written really well you kind of like i don't know it's like you, you internalize it in a way that's even the right word but yeah you mean like how uh <clears throat> is gambit's real name remy yeah i think remy lebeau uh, how when they write his dialogue, is you, you can tell there's some kind of accent to it. Yeah, so, like uh, Rogue. Rogue is the same. Like, and, Rogue has a certain way she speaks. So when you're you're reading it as a kid, you kind of like you you, you kind of imagine it. You know, you kind of like begin to like, how would that sound if I'm? Because you know, like like I said, I'm reading these comic books. I'm reading them over and over again. Mm -hmm. So like I'm hearing Wolverine, you know, he has like a, you know, in my my head he's got like a, like a gruff voice, like you know he's got like, and you kind of like start getting into it, so you kind of like, you know, almost like create how they sound in a way when when you're reading it, you know, like I said the same thing about like, uh, my my favorite character is Hal Jordan, Green Lantern. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah, like uh. Like I when I when I read like a comic book of his if you're not writing him like i think he should be written like it takes me completely out of the comic book because in my head you know he's got a certain like style to him you know he's very kind of cocky and arrogant and very confident mm -hmm. you know like and if you don't write him a certain way and, and a lot of creators didn't it would completely like take me off because i know how he sounds yeah you know, like the thing like when i'm doing as a writer like i kind of like i know how each character sounds like to me i've always been able to kind of when i was writing the little short stories and stuff like i could i could imagine like you know how how, how does inferno sound like i like it's crazy like i couldn't even like you know i couldn't draw him well but like in my head like i had like a picture like a full picture of like you know him out of costume him in the costume you know how he sounded what was it is like and this is stuff I, like i'm just coming up with this when i'm like a a teenager for no other reason just to like for my own sake <laughs> you know like i'm just like coming up with all this stuff like so so i, I like that you know there's kind of been some that's kind of i've been able to flex that muscle again mm -hmm. yeah while well, working on this project um yeah so when when you decided that you weren't uh was it in your teens in high school and stuff where you discovered or felt that you didn't have the artistic skills to do comics? Yeah. Uh, did you yeah, then, exactly. you know, I was taking art classes. So. You did take art classes? Do you go to like an art college or anything like that? Uh, no, I, I never went to college. Uh, uh, I was going like in high school, you know, I was trying to figure out like, you know, what did I want to do with, with my life and stuff? And that was kind of like, I had a couple areas of study and those kind of didn't really pan out. So I just kind of mm -hmm. went to the workforce after, you know? 
And a lot of people do. Yeah. I mean, for many, going to college is more more years of indoctrination <laughs> where, where you don't really learn useful skills <laughs> uh, unless you actually have a specific major in mind. So, I mean, I don't like people who don't go to go to college um, because it's literally not not for everyone. Uh, I was wondering, did if you felt that you didn't, you weren't up to par for you know being an artist, did you like dive head in to uh, like storytelling, uh, scripting, that kind of stuff? Is that no, that was uh, any kind of writing I did. It was very kind of personal. Like I wrote stuff, like I had notebooks where I wrote stuff, but you know, I'm somebody who struggled a lot with anxiety when I was younger. So the idea of sharing my work, something that I've spent time after time with people, it, I'd like that, that, that was really, wasn't something I was really kind of prepared to when I was younger. Mm. Like now, like now, you know, like I kind of, I found ways to get over that kind of anxiety issues and stuff. Like, but when I was younger, like that was something that was really kind of really personal. Like any writing I would do, like I, I wouldn't even really share with my friends. Mm. You know, like uh, It was just so like personal for me. Uh, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, go ahead. So in the, in your group of friends, I mean, were you all into comics or were you the main comics guy? Oh no! Like uh, I had a bunch of friends who were into like comic books. We were all into like pro wrestling, comic books, uh, movies, music. You know, we all each one kind of had like their own like favorite. You know, I had a buddy who uh, loves Batman and stuff, so he collects mostly anything that like Bat Family and stuff. And then, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, like my my yeah. buddy is like a huge Wolverine fan, so he collect anything Wolverine and stuff. So we all kind of had like our own pockets of stuff, you know. Did, did you do that thing where you guys have discussions like you pit one uh, hero versus another hero? Who's going to win between them? Oh, hell yeah. Like when uh, when DC did the DC versus uh, Marvel, did the DC versus Marvel fights, we got into tons of arguments about who would really win. <laughs> <laughs> that was all like a blah, blah. What do the creators of these books know anyway? <laughs> yeah. That guy wouldn't win. <laughs> That's the fun of it, you know. It's like coming up with reasons. So like, oh no, this guy would beat him up. You know, Captain America would beat up Batman because blah blah blah. You know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So that was a off, off one. What was your inspiration for the Ace, and uh, where did it come from? Like, um, what led uh, you to, you know, making the Ace happen? Ah, uh, the main origin started like beforehand. Uh, uh, main idea is, uh, you know, I, I'm on Twitter, I'm Potter Comics Gay, I'm meeting all these different people. And uh, I was looking for an avatar because before, when I was using my original Twitter account, I used to just have my face uh, revealed. And I was like, you know, I saw all these people with cool avatars. And I was like, oh, I want, a, I want one, you know. But I said, I have no artistic talent or anything, so I got to find somebody who can do that. So I reached out to uh, Sweens from Oddity. It was before he'd even done Oddity. Uh, he, he's working on like art for it and he'd done like cyber frog fan art and stuff. So I knew him. We were cool. So I reached out to him to do like if he was interested in doing a commission for me. And he's like, yeah, what do you have in mind? So we kicked out some ideas. I told him about some of my favorite heroes. Told him, you know, I'm a big like Dark Hawk fan. Uh, uh, I'm a big fan of like the Parallax Hal Jordan armor design. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, I'm not a fan of the character. I think the armor design that they did for him was cool. Oh. <laughs> so we were just throwing like ideas and stuff. And I thought he was just going to draw, do like something like kind of simple or like me wearing like some armor and stuff. It would just be like a sign like fun, you know, for like an avatar. But you mean he, like art or something? Yeah. And uh, he came back with this design for this, for the ace, like the original design of space. And I thought, wow, this is really cool. Like this is completely different than like, what I was like had in my head, like he blew me away with the design of it. So, you know, I kind of like, it kind of stuck in me, kind of like sparked a little bit of an idea, but I didn't really know, you know, what what, what was what I was able to do or anything. So, so I started getting some commissions done by different uh, 
comics gay artist and they started doing like their takes on it like i had uh narwhal did like a pinup for me he did wow. this really cool design uh and each one would put a little twist on it like the one you see now that i have that's uh -huh. by uh canalis oh all right so he did that and they all kind of gave little tweaks to it of the character but under the same principle and it, like i really kind of started like there, there's some, there's something to this like this this design it's really i could do more than just have it like as an avatar like i can this this could be like something then that's when it kind of re-sparked like all right who who could this be and i at first i wasn't even going to use the name the ace uh, it's, it, it ended up just being like uh chosen because i think when it sounds cool and it kind of fits what i came up with okay. but uh, you know i took different names around and stuff it was just going to be like the design so like i started kind of working on a little bit of a backstory and i was like eh, i don't know like you know i i was kind of rusty i hadn't really written much as far as anything personal for a while so i kind of reached out to uh, couple of buddies i was like what do you think about this like this idea i have like am i going in the right direction and stuff and the guy i went to uh was really kind of like he's, he's very honest so you know if if it's not up to par he'll tell me you know and so like uh he he said no i, I can you have something you have something here like you need to flesh it out but you know this this, this can work so that's kind of when it kind of started me on my journey. And it's been like, it's probably been over 15 months now since I've been working on this. Oh, wow. Nice. So like it's been gone through a long process. Uh, had uh, Steve Dye help me edit like the original script that I sent him. Uh, so he was a good help early on. And then he had to go and do Vestige and he was doing all these other books. Uh -huh. So then I kind of took over and then, you know, I've been working with some other friends behind the scenes kind of kicking over different drafts that I've been doing. So that's kind of like how everything kind of came together. And then, you know, I was looking for an artist. Uh, I found one, but he had some personal issues. Oh, okay. So right. he kind of fell through. And then that's when I was like, you know what? I, I'm a really big fan of Canales' design. Like, I don't know if he is free, because I know he was working for Zach. But, you know, let, let's reach out to him and see, like, if, you know, he can fit me into a schedule or what. So I reached out to him and he's like, yeah, man, I'm interested. Like I gave him the pitch. He's like, this is right up my alley. I was like, all right. So then he told me like when he had free time, I was like, that's perfect. Cause I'm still putting everything together. And it, it just kind of came together real quick. And he, he did like a great job. He's doing the art for the main stories, a couple of different stories in the, in mm -hmm. the comic, but the main story, the art is uh, by him. And uh, Theo Gonzalez is doing the colors. He did the colors for Brutus. So. Mm -hmm. Brutus Badass? Yep. Oh, okay. So, uh, I talked to Donald because uh, Donald's actually doing the cover for the Ace. Is that right? Oh, my gosh. So, can't wait till people see that. So he's doing uh, the main, the default cover, the standard original cover? Uh, yeah, like the, it's really the only one. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, I, you know, you know, uh, learning about Comicscape, uh projects over the last what nearly a year, well over a year now uh i'm so used to everyone <laughs> releasing very good covers yeah i know uh, but that's cool especially for your first campaign i mean you yeah. don't want to get, <clears throat> get you don't want to get in over your head yeah definitely you know, you know i like i I've, I've i've been cool with donald for a while like when even when he was first thinking about coming to Comic Skate, you know, I was talking to him and stuff. So I'm a big supporter of Brutus. So, uh, so you know, we, we have a. So uh, you've got the early sign up page. It's coming soon. Yeah, the mailing list uh, is live right now. Uh, trying to just get some more. Uh, more signals for it, trying to spread the word, you know. I know there's a lot of projects going on right now, lots of stuff launching, lots of stuff, you know. Do you have, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Do you have someone uh do you have like your artist doing the lettering? I mean, or the logo and uh, 
the lettering or do you have someone else doing that? oh no that 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 logo right there is done by another artist on the book how comics he's uh he's he's basically doing a masquerade from lost pages oh okay yeah he did all the logos for lost pages and stuff so he's doing a four page origin story for Ooh. for uh, this character angelique she's gonna be the the villain in uh volume two of the ace Oh, so wow. we do like a little four page origin story to like introduce her. Nice. Uh, he's, he's, he's Hal's incredibly talented. That guy does great work. Uh, I can't wait to show off the stuff he's working on. Oh, uh, cool. 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 So the ace is a young man looking for purpose who discovers the remains of a shooting star and it changes his life forever. Backers receive an exclusive trading card after sign up. That's pretty cool. Yeah, trading card by uh, the great Arch Cider. Oh, uh, yeah, he did a killer job with it. Nice, nice. Uh, did did it come pretty easy for you to find the talent you needed for to make this book happen, or was it like kind of long and arduous? And... Uh, after I found Canalis, it was pretty easy. Uh, you know, it just kind of everything. Then kind of really uh, kind of fell into place, you know. Like I reached out to Dono to do the cover, and then through Dono I found a colorist to color Canalis. Because I tried, I had a couple other people who did samples, but it wasn't a hundred percent a match. And then, okay, yeah, yeah, so that's when gonna I out To a Canalis, uh, to a Dono's colorist, he he did the first page back, and I was like, "This is it!" Like he got it right away. Like oh, he, nice. he got what Canalis was doing, and he did a great job. That and then cool. I, after that, uh, you know, I was talking with my buddy Sweens and, you know, kind of kicking around some ideas about doing like a little epilogue story. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, you know, like uh, I'm busy with Oddity, but uh, I might be able to fit this in. So he's been in between finishing up Oddity. He's, he's been throwing me a couple pages. So that's been well. And then, like I said, uh, the How Comics team was kind of, just kind of came out of blue you know i was looking for a way to introduce a character and i didn't want to introduce her in the vo second volume i wanted to find a way to kind of introduce her a little early okay all right so i thought like you know if i can make this four page origin work then i can just have her show up in volume two and mm -hmm. a lot of the work has been done all right cool so i just finished the script for uh volume two so oh cool um yeah. Does it take you a while? What is the writing process like? I mean, do you lock yourself in a room and commit to a certain number of pages of writing each? No, I can't. I can't work like that. Uh, I'm very much. Uh, everything is basically plotted. For well, first, I plot it in my head. Then I do. Uh, I do notes. So I take everything that's in my head and I write notes for it. And once I have the notes down, then I have to find like quiet time. I have to find like a day where nothing is going on. I have peace. And then I write the whole thing out and I can spend the whole day. And that's just like, once it's done, it's just about going back and like tweaking. So I'll go back to it like a week later and then I'll tweak it. That's tweak the dialogue, tweak the, the well, this, well, this should be here. I could take that out. And then, you know, like, this is just like re re going over it again. How's the spelling? How's the, you know, how's like the description? Does something need more description? Because I write it out for my for my artist. I want to make it as easy on him as possible. So I want to be as descriptive as possible. And then the stuff where he can shine, I tell them, hey, you can live a note. Like, you know, you can do your thing on this here, but I want to I want to have like a clear direction. So like he he doesn't have to come up with you know, 50 yeah, things. Stretch, yeah. Mm -hmm. All kinds of variables. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty cool. Um, it, a part of that, what you said reminds me of something I, uh, I heard from, it was like a suggestion. I don't know if you, you visit and listen to uh, Red Valkyrie. Uh, they have this show called writing pros. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, they have all kinds of great suggestions on writing and doing books and stuff. 
And one of the things I heard once was, you know, it's always good to have an editor, but when worse comes to worse, it, when it comes to the writing process, once you write something, let your mind rest for like a week and then approach it again. Like you were just saying, you approach it with new eyes, fresh eyes. And, um, uh, that's a really good idea because if you are constantly putting your nose to the grindstone and you're like myopic, you're, you're too close to the project and you know, you could go get yourself uh, going crazy because you're constantly editing all at once. All yeah. The and then uh, another thing about, you know, once the artist draws it, you have to go over it again. <laughs> yeah, because you, since you're the creator, you've got to give the the approve. You got to approve the work that's being done and mm -hmm. and give the go ahead. Yeah, and even if it, like he could do something that changes something, like a couple pages later, like I had to rewrite. I think the last three, two three pages of like the main story. Oh, is that right? Which analysis? Uh, cause like I had the idea and it, it didn't really quite work. So instead of trying to force it, I was like, can I, let's, let's talk, you know, this is where I want to end it. And this is, it. and we just banged it out real quick. It wasn't even like anything like, because <laughs> we, we had already had the, the story set up and we knew how it would end right? So how the first issue ends. So it's just about like just tweaking a couple pages. And we went, we did those two and then, you know, he, did them and then then there's an, another tweak with uh right. gothic arch thank you brother i appreciate that uh like i'm a mirror what up go <laughs> welcome welcome gothic arch good to have you just signed up ace awesome oh thank you <clears throat> uh so being the creator and uh you know being as detailed as you can and thorough do you also include like uh well i remember you say you, you don't really draw but do you actually do like thumbnail sketches do you do uh stick figures do you do like little uh directional things that show where the lights coming from light source is coming from or what no. angle looking at the character no when i when i when i hire a guy i want him to do what he does the idea is to just translate what i have on the page like mm -hmm. if i describe you know uh the ace punches a guy you know like there's obviously a hundred ways that you can do that you know mm -hmm. so you want to be descriptive you know Right, the ace launches himself and delivers a huge Superman punch. Now, if you know MMA, you know what a Superman punch is. <laughs> you know, right. it's not like the comic book Superman punch is when a guy leaps up and throws like a big uh, punch straight to like his opponent. It's like an exaggerated. They do it a lot in wrestling too, like a big exaggerated jumping punch. Mm. So, like, you know, so when you're describing it, you give it like the description that it needs and then once the artist gets it then he can you know put it in his own way so like that's kind of how and me and me and canales we were like we had like a great vibe like he completely like he kind of knew exactly kind of when i would describe something he got it and if he tweaks something is usually making it better mm. and if something didn't work you know he He'd scratch it and draw it how I want him to, you know, which is another, you know, good thing. So we yeah. vibe very well, man. Like, uh, I have nothing but high uh, regard for him. Like, he did killer work on this. I'm very excited for people to see, like, his work. I think Theo gives it, like, a big boost. The colors Theo did really brought it to life. And I think people are really going to like what uh, Ken Alice did on this, like, it's, it's very different from his other stuff, which is very, all very good. 
Mm-hmm. Like I'm a big fan of what he did on like Iron Sight and uh, SOS. Mm-hmm. I love SOS. SOS is great. But this is more like kind of traditional superhero stuff. It's just the first time he's done anything like that. Oh, okay. So. Very cool. It's uh, a unique thing to be able to connect with an, you know, a writer and an artist being able to connect so that they're on the same wavelength and they vibe really well together. That's definitely uh, like a match made in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, basically, uh, Gothic Art says, "Love the helmet design, man." Yeah, that's all our Canales. I mean, it's all Sweens and Canales, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty cool looking. Uh, yeah, so you see that black and white right there? Uh huh. With the, that's uh, that's the black and white for uh, Art Ciders uh, trading card. I actually have the full color. Let me see if I can bring it up on my screen. All right. One second. Yeah, man. So I reached out to him and because uh, I saw he did like a pinup for Tilt, which was oh. really colorful, colorful and really popped. I was like, you know what? I would love to uh, talk to him and see if he'd be interested. And he was. And like I said, I thought he did like a, did a tremendous job with it. Ah. Ooh. So that's the uh let's see if I can zoom in a bit. There we go. Mmm. Right. Yeah. So like so yeah, our cider did that card and then the actual design of the the physical card, like the logo and, and uh and stuff, like you know. The blue border, all that stuff was done by Sim. Yeah. Oh. It came out with like a cool little design for it, which was dope. Uh, so, yeah, uh, everybody who uh, signs up and backs the book will receive this exclusive trading card. Oh, cool. When it ships out. And uh, <laughs> shout out to Zay Ninja. The Ace would make a really cool shirt. Yeah, and, and you can uh, pick one up at uh, Zade Workshop on, on their SD store. <laughs> Cheap plug. Uh, um, you you've already got T-shirts for uh, Ace. Oh yeah, I have uh, one for Brandon. Uh, you see that little uh, on the left corner there? There's like a little Ace design thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Wait, hold on. Oh, you mean the upper left corner? Yep. Yeah, Let's yeah. Go I see back. The logo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that uh it's on a shirt. Brandon right. did he designed that logo. So you could get that and you can also get like a narwhal the print he did for me. That's on a shirt, oh. which is really cool. Oh okay. So, so yeah, you can go get those. Uh you only have a limited time for the narwhal design. That's gonna be retired soon. So if you're a fan of narwhal, definitely check that out. It's uh I think it's a really dope one of the best pinups he did, like he completely captured the character in, in you know the narwhal style, and it's really dope design. So can you uh, can you drop me the link for that or? Um... Uh, yeah, give me a second. So it, is the the print on sale or the T-shirt of the print on sale? Uh, it's the T-shirt of the print. Ah, uh, all right, cool. I should maybe talk to Narwhal about seeing if I could do the print, but that would be cool. Include yeah. the campaign. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a it's a great piece. It's just uh, you know, I've got so much art and different stuff. I don't want to like overload it. You know, kind of want it. I, I think it would be hard to over <laughs> overload. Uh, but yeah. I, I think when you're uh, when you're coming up, uh, you got to be real careful about not overdoing stuff. Yeah, true, true. So I, I'd, I'd rather kind of, you know, if there's demand, like people demand it, then, you know, mm-hmm. I'm very, I'm one of those people, give the people what they want, you know? Right, right. But you always don't want to, you don't want to overextend yourself. True. That's kind of what I, I'm, I'm always very kind of cautious when it comes to 
especially with something that's unproven, you know? Mm -hmm. like, like, I think it's cool and stuff, but who knows if people will, you know? Right, right. Probably a wise idea. So I dropped the, uh, the Etsy store link on the private chat. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of cool merch on there. You have uh, some Magic Cop merch. I have some merch for Blood Hunt and Sim. Uh, Seven Legions. Oh That's yeah, I, I did. I bought the Seven Legion shirt. Oh nice, yeah. The Michael Beacon, go uh, check out Seven Legions. Oh yeah, yeah. So. Let's see. Here. So yeah, like I was saying, uh, the, the this trading card here, it's only gonna be available through the sign up. This will never be like reprinted or redone again. Ooh. So this is gonna be a collector's item, you know. For if sure. you like it, you're not gonna get it. I won't put it out with anything else. This is for the, the people who support from the beginning. Oh, you know, okay. I believe I believe in giving exclusives to people. Like especially like the backers who who show uh show support and I'm very uh you know I'm very thankful for anybody who signed up for the uh, mailing list. So this is uh, my thank you to them. Fantastic. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, I cannot wait. Yeah, I cannot wait to to have these in my hand. <laughs> like uh, I'm we're still finishing up the the bag design and everything, like it's but uh, yeah, when 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 I order these, like they just look great, man. Like kind of inspired by like the the Marvel Comics uh, trading cards. So when you do trading, are, do you anticipate having more than that trading card? Yeah, yeah. like I plan on, you know, if the book gets funded. Uh, they have another design for the Ace. Mm. Uh, that I want to get to people. All right. Hopefully, you know, depends if we get some stretch goals, there might be more. Absolutely. You know. oh, no. oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. How are you going to lay out your uh, trading cards? Are you going to have like a little bit of story on the back or are you going to go with like uh, bars of stats? Uh, like no, they're going to, uh, I don't know if you've, Ever read the uh, Strife uh, Strike Files? Strike Files. Uh, no, it's a spe special like issue of uh, like a special like one shot they did for uh, Executioner song back in the nineties. There's this issue where Strife does all uh, descriptions for like all all the X Men and, and different people. Oh, it's basically he'd be like all oh, Cyclops, and then he'd do like a little written like. You know, Cyclops is powerful. He's blah blah blah. You know, I I can't stand them. You know, you do like a little personal kind of like diatribe for each character. It's something kind of inspired by that. It's not exactly that, but it's gonna have like a little. Somebody's gonna be describing the character, like, you know, the Ace, blah blah blah. You know, like, you know, so there's somebody describing each. It's gonna be the same person narrating like a description of each character uh, and stuff. So that, that's kind of like the main idea. Yeah, that could definitely be fun. Yeah, I, I used to love stuff like that back back then. Like that, that's the really stuff that kind of inspired me. And like I said, there's really nobody doing anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's like a a lane open for like for like this kind of specific uh kind of stuff. Like if, if people like grew up on it like I did or maybe they 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 never read it and maybe it inspires them to go back and check out some old issues of Dark Hawk, you know. Mm -hmm. Nothing would make me nothing would make me happier. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like the, like when people like go back to, to like the stuff that kind of inspired me and really left the mark on me when I was growing up. You know? Oh well, for sure, yeah. Yeah that sounds like it definitely could be a lot of fun. Um having those kinds of backings on the front, it says superhero. So are they basically categorized superhero hero versus super villain or yeah. are there like a whole range of different types of, uh, for now it's just going to be superhero and super villain. All right. But yeah, it's like, a, 
Well, it tells you at a glance whether it's a good guy or a bad guy, right? Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, like like with everything, there's kind of more to the story. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, like, the description will, will, will touch on some of those things. And, you know, like, there's a, there is some, uh, some bit of mystery, like, uh, in the book, like I said, the, the main story is very kind of like traditional superhero. It's kind of like an homage to like, you know, the old issues of Dark Hawk and stuff. That's had to Sleepwalker. And then the epilogue is a little different. You know, it's a little kind of more, more of like a mystery piece. I like to call it. A mystery piece. Yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know if you're, you watch Lost. I never did, but, you know, I heard commentator well yeah, like uh, people talk about it and all that stuff you know and, and lost they would do this stuff where they'd have like you know they're following all the people who crashed on the plane right okay all right and then they would have this like the thing about showing this guy in a hatch like yeah you'd be like what's this guy in a hatch what's he doing like and as the series went on you know the the future episodes eventually like they would come across the guy in the hatch you know, like you're oh. kind of tying together and they it'd be like like a mystery, like who's the guy in the hatch? And everybody would be like, you know, coming up with their own theories and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, it's not not as convoluted, but it is a little bit of like that there's like a, a more more than meets the eye in the epilogue and, and it's kind of up to you to kind of like put it together. And even when you do like, you know, that there might be some twists and turns. In the following epilogues, because each issue should have like a small epilogue of, of a couple pages, and eventually the, the the epilogue story will cross over into the main story, but you don't know how. Oh, so that's what I mean. Like, it, it's a little kind of like experiment. I was kind of messing around with, uh, and I thought like, you know, this is interesting. I don't know, if it'll get pulled off, <laughs> you know, like uh, like I wanted to, but you know. It's not going to affect really anything that I have planned for, you know, it's not going to really impede anything for the next couple of volumes. So, you know, right. you, you try something out and hopefully people dig it. I think Sween's, Sween's art is killer. Like, I just got another page from him last week. Uh, it's just beautiful stuff that he does. And then just like, you know, at the very least, people will like the art. <laughs> so, you know. Cool, cool, cool. So let's uh, jump back to this. Yeah, neat looking character. I mean, in one way, it it looks almost like a little mashup, but it is cool. It, it kind of reminds me of the helmet of Boba Fett. Uh, the the stripe top of the uniform where the color goes from the shoulder pads to the stripe down the chest and back to the shoulder pads. It makes me think of Cyclops. Uh, the upper arms remind me of Cyclops. The, uh, the weaponry looks like, uh, to me, aliens. And uh, the mounted rocket launcher or a cannon, it reminds me of Predator. <laughs> so pretty neat pretty neat uh the ace epilogue backup story that will eventually tie into the main storyline in future issues so you got a couple images yeah the one on the left is by canalis that's uh one of the panels from the story uh, oh that's, uh, the yeah. ace logo <laughs> Yeah, that's what it actually looks like. Uh, I let a lot of people play around with the design. Uh -huh. A lot of them will. A lot of them will put like an A with a star and stuff, which is, it's fine. Like not all did that. You know, like, oh, okay. Cool. Like it's cool. It's cool. Like ID and stuff, but that right there on his chest, the little, the little three piece kind of thing. That's the actual. That's that's kind of like the actual A symbol. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> uh, uh, and just in case you're wondering, uh, the character inside the helmet, his name is David Diaz. 
David Diaz. Yes, and David right there is uh, talking with his mom, revealing, okay. revealing uh, you know. He's doing uh, a face reveal? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, oh, hey, mom, it's me. <laughs> Surprise. It looks like he's got nanobot technology like Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I was trying to make out what this book is that she's reading monster something, uh, attack. Is it like a graphic novel she's holding or is that a, uh, a spoiler? No. Uh -oh. <laughs> Are you there? Oh, let me see. Yeah. Oh, like, I'm trying to see you like a. The book that she's holding in her hand. It's My new he says, "Keep." Was it? Monster Hunter. Oh, Monster Hunter. So, what's the third? Is that another word at the bottom? It looks like three words: Monster Hunter. Maybe it strikes or special. Yeah, I can't really make it out. But uh, the okay. main, I think it's like a like a subtitle. Uh, all right. Just Monster Hunter, etc. Yeah. Cool. And then is this all right? So Ace, the Ace drawn by Iron Sights artist, is it pronounced Ibe? Canal? E Ibai. E Ibai. Yeah. Ibai. Oh, that's cool. Evi Canales and uh, the Ace epilogue drawn by oddity artist Swings. Yeah, that's a panel from the uh, epilogue story. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Back to receiving an exclusive train card after sign up. All right, cool. Let us check out the trailer so it's made using some software called InShot InShot I haven't heard oh, oh no that's the uh that's a transfer I did oh all right yeah like uh you know when I get like an mp3 like uh you can you can kind of mess with like some of the layout of it to make it easier to post on YouTube oh huh. okay in shot. Can you still see it? Yep. All right, cool. When a young man in search of purpose stumbles across a shooting star, his life is altered forever. Uh, iron sights. The alien remnant transforms him into the ace. A super-powered, armored being with wondrous capabilities. Oh, wow. Check him out. The Ace is a throwback to early 90s Marvel comics like Darkhawk, Sleepwalker, and Death's Head 2. This is the story of an average Joe thrown into alien and extraordinary circumstances. As he struggles to get a grip on his newfound abilities, bounty hunters from outer space come to collect his prize. is bringing the fun, weird, and fantastic back to comics. Ooh. Don't miss out. Learn the origins of the latest sci-fi legend. The Ace. Hail Hex Island. Damn. That's pretty darn good. 
Yeah, man. Uh, Red Gaze did that. That was awesome. Oh my Shout god! To him. Yeah, man. He's uh, been killing it with all the trailers. So, man. did a great job with that. Yeah, he's doing a lot of the trailers for people. Uh, Maddie knew he is really distracted today. I hear you. Next time I come, hail. Hail Edwin the Ace. For sure. That's pretty sweet. And then I also wanted to jump over... Where was it? All right. So this is uh, the Zaid Workshop. Yep. Uh, on Etsy, you'll find, uh, I'm not the best at navigating this site, but uh, here in the Zaid Comic Store, you can see, of course, you know, stuff from the Lost Pages. You get a cover t-shirt there, something about Down with Mainstream. Yes, Down with Mainstream Archaeology, all the uh, Egypt News fans from the hard line. They, they know what that's about, you know? We're here to expose uh, the lies of uh, mainstream archaeology. Oh. Huh. So, yeah. The truth is out there. It is. I just just ordered my shirt. Yes, if you if you feel like we do, you want to expose these liars, pick up some sweet merch. All right. Uh, can you give me a gist on what kind of lies the mainstream archaeology industry is spreading yeah they want to tell everybody that uh you know the pyramids were were built about five thousand years ago and uh you know when, when there's clear evidence of uh you know the water erosion on it shows that uh it's much uh older than that uh, and they refuse to accept facts you know uh graham hancock has done a great you know, if you should. Hello, are you there? I don't know if it's on my side or what, but. That's on my side. Oh, okay. All right. There was like some static yeah, noise. That's a uh, Gothic arc says. So the Sphinx has water damage. Damn it. That's right. Yeah, water so, you know is it? yeah so so what are, are are today's archaeologists trying to just make up the uh origins yeah, they're, of things yeah they're trying to they're trying to deny uh you know the truth really you know like the, the, their gimmick is up you know mainstream yeah. media knocked them off oh huh. that's right see Gothic art you gets it But yeah, I mean, we could spend an hour on that. You know, you can come to the hard line. Uh, Brandon does Egypt news every every Monday. There's a segment where, where we, we tell you the, the real truth behind the, the conspiracies and everything that's going on. And this is, you know, this sure is just a small piece of like a rebellion standing up against the lies. We, we side with Graham Hancock and all the truth tellers. So yes, uh, join us. Oh, all right. Uh, but what is there? What do they have to gain by making these kinds of uh, power? Oh, they they get to control the narrative. I mean, this, this has oh. been their story. You know that they're, they're they're trying to uh, convince everybody that 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 they have all the answers when they're really you know clueless. Right. You know, I think thing this. There's so much stuff to uncover of all the lies and everything that they're peddling like i said people like graham hancock have had enough uh and they're they're here to expose them and you know i i've only recently started to to, to get into this and find out you know kind of doing my own research and deep dive and there's a lot of evidence that really uh is actual legit and scientifically proven that uh, you know the Sphinx and a lot of the uh, pyramids are much older than we've been told they are, hmm. and uh, you know, like I said, I urge everyone to do their own homework. But I think it's, I can say, it's it's factual, you know. So oh. we, we gotta we gotta get the liars and the frauds out of there, man. If you believe in science, but you believe in facts, 
Uh, do your own research as always, but uh, find out the truth. And when you find out, you'll be shocked. Uh, this is kind of on another, another tangent, but what are your thoughts on dinosaurs? Do you think they exist or do you think archaeologists made it up and are literally making these cast giant cast molds and uh, saying that these creatures existed all this time just so uh, archaeologists can spend hours upon hours in deserts stuffing things off. I believe they existed. Uh, do I believe there's also funny stuff going on with that? Yeah. But, you know, dinosaurs, I believe everything's, from what I've seen, did exist during the time. <clears throat> as many uh, types and as many stuff as they say it is, that's a whole kind of different. But, you know, the main kind of dinosaurs that we know about, yeah, they exist. Hmm. Okay. Uh, this Hex Allen Comics says, read Fingerprints of the Gods. Fingerprints of the Gods. In audible. Uh, Mata Nui says, if you think dinosaurs weren't really, you're kind of a moron. <laughs> Um, so on Zade's merch store, you've also got Alana from Seven Legions, you've got Magic Cop, Blood Hunt, uh, Vincent, character Vincent, then you've got uh, uh, Cupcake Kitties, another Dan with the Mainstream. Oh, here's the ace. So you got the So is it literally in the top right corner of your chest? It's on your, all right, so it's gonna be on your right. No, yeah, the picture is just. Oh wait, or it, it's not rotated at an angle, is it? That's supposed to be mostly head on. That's kind of, ex all right, correct me if I'm wrong, but is it supposed no, it's to be, gonna be, it, it's be supposed at the center? Be, just, is it supposed to be centered or off center? Yeah, it'll it, it'll that one looks like it, that one looks like it's that's, yeah, that's the uh the, that's the uh ace uh narwhal design. Oh okay. Yeah, no, voila. Did a great job with that. And uh, yeah, I actually owned that shirt. I had a brand that sent me a sample to see how the shirt would be. It's really good quality oh. and stuff. It holds up well. Nice. Good deal. It goes into our. Was it? it and uh, we're gonna have some more. Uh, we're gonna have some more shirts uh, challenging the mainstream archaeology coming up soon. So stay tuned uh, for that. <laughs> Typo. Oh yeah, yeah, no big deal. Um, no judgment here. Let's see. So you have those two. Let's see. The rest are Magic Cop, Pretzel Babes, <laughs> Vintage Sub <style> Pinup, <laughs> and Donut Dollies, <laughs> Churro Chicas. <laughs> uh, combining Pinup Girls with food. <laughs> uh, Air Cage, Mortal Kombat, Air Cage, Johnny Cage. Oh, okay. Cool. I'm on the right. Yeah, all right. I'm on the right spot. Cool, cool, cool. And 
Well, I'll Hello, Sim. Good to have you, Sim Poitier. Pale. All right. Let's apply. I don't know about you, and I don't know how the pre-lunch page works, whether you have the ability to edit it. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I think it would be handy if you could load the, the trailer up here so you don't have just a static image. If it'll allow you to. I don't know if you have to wait until you, you officially go live or not. Are you still there? Oh, what the heck? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Did I bore you that much? Oh, gosh. Oh, all right. There you are. Yeah, sorry about that. But a StreamYard really dislikes my internet connection for some reason. It keeps like uh, usually about after an hour, it usually just goes nuts. Oh, and I still have some sort of audio issues. Yeah, like it's been it's been happening now for like the last month. I have no idea what's going on. Oh, strange. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see here. Yeah, what I was saying, I don't know if you heard any of it. Uh, because I didn't realize you had disappeared until after I finished saying it. Um, I was saying if I don't know, really know how <clears throat> this stuff on the pre-launch pages works behind the scenes or if you can even edit uh, once you've got it loaded uh, and up. But I think it would be handy if you actually put the trailer in place of the the static image. Um, I mean, the trailer can, you can add this logo or, yeah, this logo for branding purposes on the beginning of the, well, maybe you already have that. Did you have that on the front of the trailer? Uh, no, it's a different image. Okay. Um, if it'll allow you to, I, I think uh, it would be pretty awesome to have your trailer also at the top of your early sign-up page. Yeah, I think you can. I just, I, you know, it, the, the sign-up had already been up for a little bit, so I didn't want, you, want to mess with it, but maybe uh, I'll add it uh, later on. Well, I, do have, uh, I do have some more time. Uh, the, the book won't launch until January, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was a question from Gothic Arch when we launched in January right. 2021. Yeah. Uh, right now, everything is set for late January. Yeah. Late January, okay. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I want to make sure the book is fully done, all the art and everything. So uh -huh. right now everything's on track, but, you know, there's always delays and holiday season are coming up. So True. you never know, there's like a hiccup. Mm -hmm. Late, I mean, I don't see it. You know, maybe it'll, if I have to delay it, it'll drop late February, you know, but it really won't be. The worst delay I can see is maybe a couple of weeks, hmm. you know, okay. but definitely within, I'd say latest would probably be like late February. And that sounds pretty reasonable. I mean, that's really not, not that far away at all. No, it's only trying to grind away, trying to. You know, especially now I just went back to work full time. It's been rough, but you know, trying to get as much promotion as I can. Oh, sure, absolutely. Uh, welcome, you, Tom Darkstar. Hello, everybody. Yeah. So you're launching January, February at the latest, twenty twenty one. Where do you see this going? 
days. Do you, are you looking at an ongoing series of books? Are you looking to do uh, like a, a mini series, a saga of three or six issues? No, I want to make this an ongoing, you know, I think there's a lot of potential, lots of different things I can do with it. You know, I have like a, a lot of it kind of plotted out. Mm -hmm. You know, I have all these notes and stuff for like where the future, where I want it to go. You know, I, I'm a fan of like the, the the serial comics, you know, like I said, I grew up on Spider-Man, X-Men, you know, one adventure ends, another one begins, you know. And I think there's a lot of different kind of places I can take the character, you know, like uh, I've already been talking, you know, me and Sim are going to do Space Heist next year. So, uh, yes, <laughs> stay tuned for, for more on that. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, so how many pages is it going to be? Uh, the first one's going to be uh, 32 pages, but it's going to be 28 pages of story. And then I have a four page kind of like fan art section I want to do. Oh, I've been getting some really like cool, like fan art pieces and I kind of want to show them off to people. Cool. But yeah, it should be like uh, the main story is about 17. I uh, have uh, seven pages uh, in the epilogue and then the four page origin that comes about to 28. All right. Um, so are you looking at uh, basically stapled? Because yeah, a floppy, yeah. A floppy, yeah, yeah, floppy. Um, and it's going to have a single cover, as you mentioned previously. Yeah, unless uh, something changes, but, but I, I just see like the one cover. Are you looking at using newsprint or are you going with like... No, uh, it'll be nice, uh, nice, nice quality papers I can have. I want it to feel like a, a current comic book, you know, want to have some weight to it and stuff. So I especially want the art to be highlighted because so, all these guys did a tremendous job. I want to make sure yep. that the art pops and the page looks beautiful. Yep, absolutely. It's looking good in that category. And uh, have you come up? Have you decided what your goal is going to be? Do you know, or can you reveal that? Yeah, I I probably will wait on that. But uh, you know, like I, I've been setting up like the the launch page. I've been working a lot behind the scenes. You know, I pretty much have it mostly set up. I've just been like tweaking it and stuff. You know, I want to keep the tiers kind of limited. You know, not just it's not going to be like nothing crazy. <laughs> You know, I believe in the kind of like streamlining a lot of that stuff. I think a lot of campaigns kind of go go for too much. Mm. Yeah, it's mostly gonna be like uh, it's gonna be the book. There'll be like a book and a print. Uh, there'll be PDF probably. Uh, there'll be uh, I have some original art uh, from the print uh, that Mike McMahon did. It's, uh, did a great job with that. Uh, he actually sent me the the original art for it, so that's going to be on the campaign. Because I don't have a lot of like traditional art, uh, Canalis, Donald, uh, Sweens, and how they're all like digital artists. So. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah that was going to be one of my other questions. <laughs> Are they digital or traditional? Yeah, it's all digital. So you're aiming to have at least a couple pieces that are original art. Uh yeah, I'm kind of in the process of kind of putting all of that together but uh, for sure uh mike mcmahon print that's going to be offered we'll we'll have the original art 11 by 17 it's standing across my room right now <laughs> <laughs> so it, that's all set and beautiful and you know somebody will hopefully uh get that frame it. it's a beautiful piece uh nice. and yeah i'm gonna have some uh joe ball sketch cards oh and, really uh, yeah joe he's, ball. He's, so he did a great job with those. Uh, maybe some other ones, depending on how they go. Like I'll, I'll, I'll have some ideas for like a, maybe like a poster, possibly. Uh, but I kind of, like I said, right now I just want to kind of keep it to a minimum, and then we'll see how the campaign goes, and if it gets funded, and then it maybe hits like a stretch goal or two, we can really kind of have fun with it, you know, because. Then like they'll have more options for like possible stickers, possible like 
more prints, more cool trading cards. Uh, just kind of more stuff. It just kind of depends how it does. Cool. Yeah, that's reasonable. Yeah, I, I think people generally like tchotchkes, you know, goodies, freebies, extras. Um, and do you already know what you're going to throw together for the feature tier? Uh, no, not not yet. Like I said, I'm still kind of waiting. Okay. For uh, for everything. I always, I mean, I personally uh, always recommend having a featured perk mm -hmm. I mean, because you've got some people who want to support you and want your pro project to succeed, but. Uh, uh, they don't necessarily want to take the time to actually scroll down and look at all the interiors, look at all the description of the campaign. And uh, some people, from what I've heard, don't always necessarily watch promo videos <laughs> for books. I mean, I, I'm among those who do does watch promo videos because I love watching promo videos, but uh, not everyone does. Um, so having a feature tier is like saying, here's the best bang for your buck. It gives you a good experience on the book itself that the project is founded on. And at the same time, you know, there's a chance for extra goodies. Um, and on top of that, the feature tier is not the cheapest tier, it's not the most expensive tier, it's just somewhere in the middle, somewhere in between. Hex Allen is asking, uh, do you have any s sneak peek artwork? Uh, I do, but I'm on my phone now, so <laughs> let me see if I can uh, give me one second. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, the phone version of StreamYards allows you to wait. You you shared your screen earlier, so yeah, I was on my uh, Chromebook. Oh, but, okay. Yeah, and then things got wonky, so oh, sometimes the phone, the connection on the phone is a little better. Hello, May May, welcome. Oh, huh. just joined the live stream and new to this area. Welcome. Hey, that looks like, uh, I guess it would be called anime. <laughs> I was almost going to say manga, but uh, wait a minute. Yeah, anime is the animation side of things, and manga is the actual written, like, comic-style books. New to this channel. Well, Welcome. Thanks for even coming. That's pretty awesome. Um, you'll find that I have a lot of, uh, I do a lot of promotion of uh, crowdfunded uh, comic skate projects, but I also cover fandom menace related topics, pop culture, you know. Um, I need to make more content on that side, but. Uh, I spend a tremendous amount of time promoting books because I want to do my part to try and help them get fully funded and help them succeed. Matt Inouye says, I'm just kind of here as I always am. You're always appreciated. You're a big supporter because, you know, hey, he, he popped off again. I wonder if it, he accidentally hit the wrong button this time around instead of him actually being dropped. <laughs> hey, hey, May May. Uh oh. I, I'm lagging. Help me. Oh, dear. All right. Um, Everybody clasp hands. Now let's make a, a row, a line, and uh, then we'll reach 
we'll reach out to uh, Edwin and uh, May May and pull them back in. Hello. Yep, yeah, I'm back. Yeah, <laughs> you popped off again. Yeah, I had to. There's no other way to share it unless I'm on like a Chromebook or something. Oh, really? How weird. I thought yeah. there, I thought there was a, a way to share. I, I must be thinking of the admin side of of the. Oh wait. Yeah. So you're back on your your Chromebook. Yep. All right. Yes. So that's a uh, a page from the Ace. You saw that little the bottom panel. This is the full page. Aha. Uh -huh. You see him barging through the door, and then he startles his mom. Uh, uh. <laughs> He's like, what the hell? <laughs> and then he uh, reveals himself. So, uh, yeah. Looks like she's jumping from excitement. Getting yeah, she's startled. Like, yeah, she should be. I mean, <laughs> you it's know. Like, Holy moly, what's this big old armed guy here? Yeah, it's like, uh, so yeah, you'll see this on the campaign page. You'll see the full colored version. But I just wanted to share some uh, some of the uh, black and whites. I haven't shared too much of the actual inside pages. So. Oh, all right. Yeah. For some neat peak hacks. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely feel free to share whatever you're able to without dropping any spoiler alerts. <laughs> no, I've shared that, that panel quite a bit, so that, that the page kind of makes sense to share. Cool. Yeah, man. Like I said, I love I love uh, the detail and the motion that, that Canales kind of gets and the little close up and stuff. You see, like his worry, he must have like calm his mom. Yeah. Just little simple things that you know an artist can do, and Canales really knows how to kind of bring that out. You know, like you see, like I love the expression. You know, his mom goes from like defense mode to like when she sees her son's face, she kind of gets like a like a more caring look in her face. Yeah, like this is little things like that. Like Canales is great. Like I'm so, so happy to work with him and glad to have him on this journey, man. He's already signed up for Volume Two if, if it gets funded. So cool. Yeah, it's nice to have the consistency from one book to the next. <laughs> and uh, if you got a, a great working relationship, then that's awesome. Were there any other interior pages you wanted to share? Uh, not for now, but I did want to show some. Uh, this is going to be, uh, this piece is by HK Stash. HK uh, Stash. Yeah, you can follow him on Twitter. Uh, I don't think I recognize HK Stash. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm thinking about making that the, uh, the other trading card once the book gets funded. Ah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have this colored by Michael Beacon. Oh, Michael Beacon is gonna color it. Cool. Yeah, so we'll put that together, and that that should be something. So this is a case where the 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 artist decided to literally draw an A in there. In yeah, every, the three pages. Everybody uh, has their own little twist, which which I like it. You know, especially when it's like more of like a pinups and stuff like that, you know? I think you can have kind of some more fun if you do like prints and stuff and kind of let the artists go a little a little more loose with their style, you know? Start like in the actual book, like, you know, it has to be kind of more uniform. But right. I think for like the other stuff you can play around with a little more. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. But yeah, I can't wait to see uh, what Beacon does with this. It's, uh, it's like a beautiful kind of like, like uh, you know, I can see this like him in space, <laughs> you know, kind of flying around and stuff. So it's just, uh, it's really cool. Like, uh, like I said, uh, he did, I discovered him. He did a piece for uh, Battle Made in Knuckle Bomb. Oh, did he? Like a, yeah, like a similar kind of piece like this for it's like a fan art piece. Oh, all right. Like, uh, I discovered him. I was like, you know, this is this is cool. I like like your style. That's a cool thing about Comic Ski. You can find all these different artists, you know. All sorts of different styles and if somebody comes across where you kind of like you know you're kind of inspired by what they do you can reach out and work with them and stuff and hopefully you know get their name out there more and stuff oh yeah for sure so, so yeah i can't wait to uh put that together uh, see. they want to show uh you saw it in the trailer 
but uh, it's piece by passion for drawing. Oh, you got passion for drawing too. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, that's pretty. The shark guy. Uh, his name's Akula. He's he's the the villain of the story, I guess. Uh, he's the one who uh, he's a bounty hunter, and he uh, he ends up finding uh, the ace and wanting to take uh, you know the armor for himself. So they throw down in the in the comic. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. The the final design's a little different, but uh, like it's gonna be like. This could be like another trading card. It could be a print. We're still kind of figuring everything out. But I just love the idea of like, you know, this like warrior bounty hunter shark <laughs> guy, you know, just kind of like a little bit inspired by Lobo, kind of like. Yeah, so, so he's a lot. He's a lot of fun. I think people are going to when they see what Canales did with him, I think he's going to people are going to want to do fan art of him. They're going to want to tackle him like when they see when they see like. So uh, what can Alice came up with? Nice, nice. Uh, let's see here. Gothic Arch says, "Warning: Comicsgate is a hat cult, <laughs> but we're nice." <laughs> yeah, uh, SJWs are social justice warriors, as you may have heard. Uh, like to call Comicsgate a hate group. So. Uh, because uh, we as a group like to turn things on their head and, you know, mock SJWs. We just drop the E and we call it hat group because so many people wear hats <laughs> in comics game. Uh, Hex Island Comics says, ha ha, my plan worked. It's my turn to show now. <laughs> May May says, I don't see comics game as a problem. Uh, Matt and Nui says, apparently there is a cult for hats. <laughs> May May says, in fact, I'd rather support independent creators, but I can't back any book. Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to, Matt and Nui. What is the title that you, you hate? Uh, let's see. It sounds way too much like a slang for jerking off. They call anything that annoys them hate. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and that right there, that's the uh, the print that's going to be in the campaign. Oh, cool. So, art is by Mike McMahon from US Assassin. Oh. And, uh, the colors are by Sim. That's that uh, right? Yeah, so we'll have the original art for that piece uh, up for sale. And then oh, is that right? Print. You'll be able to get the print uh, on the actual campaign. Hmm. Oh, okay. All right. So Meta Nui follows up Battle Made in Knuckle Bomb. <laughs> so Meta Nui hates that name because it sounds like slang for jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oops. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Yeah. It looks like he's on a pile of his enemies. Yeah, exactly. He leaves uh, destruction wherever he goes. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Battle made in Knuckleball. <laughs> Battle made in Knuckleball. Wait, you two let me say that? <laughs> In uh, streams, you'd be kind of surprised what you can say, uh, especially if the mobs, uh, the mods, the moderators, uh, you know, let your message through. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be the back of the trading card. Oh, all right. Yeah, Sorry. like uh, there'll be like a description on like that that bottom part there, and then. They'll have the height, the weight, and that kind of stuff on the, the top one there. Ooh, cool. So right. Let's sneak peek at that. Awesome. awesome. What else do you have? Uh, this is a character that's going to be 
she's going to be the main villain for the second book, but she has that uh, origin story by uh, How Comics. That's her name is Angelique. Uh, so uh, this is uh, this is like the uh, character design kind of piece by Chris Oak that he did for me. Uh, Chris Oak. Yeah, he did a he did a fan art for uh, for More Lethal, and it blew wow. me away. It was like great, great fan art piece, and I was like, I love your style. Like you know, have this character I want to like do for the second book, and reached out to him. And he we kind of linked together, and this is what we came up with. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, he he did a tremendous job. I love the little spokes on like the the golden spokes there on the wings, and then you know. Uh, she she won't really have the horns, but it's a great touch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, artist uh, rendition. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you know, people. You know, like I said, I'll, 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 people will will do fan art her with the horns. I know it. <laughs> They're just totally fine. Go nuts. Uh, but yeah, she's uh, yeah. So she has a little four page origin. Like I said, it's oh. Nice. It's really, uh, it's nothing, it's completely different from the rest of the stuff on the book, but I just think, like, it's it's, it's great. I cannot wait to show people. Like, uh, I'm a big uh, big fan of How Comics, and, uh, you know, he's, he's done a great job on Lost Pages, and uh, he's doing a great job on, like, uh, the little origin story. So, and like I said, it kind of gives you some of her, like, background and then it just allows us to like set the table and then just introduce her in our volume two and uh yeah i finished the script for volume two so cool send it to canalis and now we gotta kind of like figure out kind of you know and do you say that uh you're for this being your first campaign you're planning on having the entire book completed before you go live yeah the yeah one of the benefits is you're not gonna have to get all stressed from the get-go uh, because of time constraints and being so locked down to working on the project you can actually do some promotion get out there on uh, promotional streams and all that good stuff yeah, like I'm, like I said, now that I'm back to working full time, you know, I, I'm gonna need to have my uh, my days off for promotion only. So if I have all the heavy lifting done, then I don't have to worry about it. So right, it becomes easier that way. That's true. Uh, let's see. Belmont and Knucklebum. Yeah, YouTube did let you say that. Uh, but if I say, what's up with the show goth, though, it won't post it at all. Ignore that. YouTube wouldn't let me say propane one stream. <laughs> propane, really? Yeah, it depends, like, on the stream. Jeez, so. what the hell's wrong? The settings, that, the settings that you have and everything. Right. YouTube is weird. Yeah. It is. YouTube's been acting weird with chess lately. Yeah. I think YouTube in general is acting weird. Yeah. I mean, they're they're relying far too much on their stupid bots, and you know it's it, it's increasingly easier and easier to to get flagged for some nonsense. And then if you literally get like three strikes, then they take down your channel mm -hmm. in its entirety. So that really sucks especially when they don't have a very good appeals system. Yeah, so this piece right here is uh, some fan art Eric Ninotowski did. Mm. Uh, this is going to be in the actual, in the book. Oh, is it? Yeah, like I, I'm doing a bunch of like fan art, taking different pieces and stuff and Cool. 
Have you already received other pieces of fan art in addition to this one or besides this one? Yeah, uh, I had one done by uh, uh, Sizo King. Uh, he did this piece for me a while back. It's one of the first things anybody has done. Cool. Yeah. Glowing weapon and everything. So does it? Does your hero have the ability to literally fly freely in space and not be concerned yes. about oxygen levels and things like that? Or mm -hmm. wearing a real backpack tank? Yeah, no, he can fly to space to you know, as the book goes on, you kind of find out more of his abilities and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but absolutely. Yeah, you know, uh, it's like uh, it's kind of early on, but yeah, he'll be able to fly uh, through space without any issues or anything. Mm. Yeah, so, and you said earlier that this is going to be an ongoing series, so mm -hmm. uh, many issues. Do you think they're all going to be um, floppies? And then, uh, uh, at least uh, the first couple ones, you know, if, if it builds up and it does well, who knows? You know, I wouldn't mind doing like a big, like graphic novel, like 48 page kind of thing. But, you know, especially since I'm, I'm self-financing this and everything, it just mm -hmm. makes sense to keep it <clears throat> the page count a little lower. Yeah, yeah. It makes it more manageable and I can spread it out over time. Well, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Were there any other pieces you wanted to share today? I uh, know. I think that's the rest, much. The rest is top secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on. Let's uh, let's catch this video trailer once more here. Oops, wrong one. Should be this one. <laughs> When a young man in search of purpose stumbles across a shooting star, his life is altered forever. The alien remnant transforms him into a super-powered armored being with wondrous capabilities. The Ace is a throwback to early 90s Marvel comics like Darkhawk, Sleepwalker, and Death's Head 2. This is the story of an average Joe thrown into alien and extraordinary circumstances. As he struggles to get a grip on his newfound abilities, bounty hunters from outer space come to collect his prize. is bringing the fun, weird, and fantastic back to comics. Don't miss out. Learn the origins of the latest sci-fi legend. The Ace. Did it? Uh, did that trailer have any of your voice in it? Uh, no, that was all I've read. All right. Cool deal. Give that one a like. Talented guy. Sweet. So yeah, guys, if you haven't subbed, uh, you can please sub to my John Aces channel. I'm five subs away from 100 and doing oh, a giveaway. 
would you drop the link for that? Your YouTube? Or actually, maybe I can find it. Maybe I can find it. Oh, hold on. It's drawing news. It's right here. What the, yep. what the frick? How come I'm not subbed? There you go. I'll drop the link. It's been a, it's been fun trying to grow a second YouTube channel because <laughs> I have my main uh, one was a pro wrestling uh, YouTube oh, channel. It's all about pro wrestling. Yeah, it's like a, I used to go to a lot of independent pro wrestling shows and really record matches and stuff. Oh. That one didn't. That one does very well, but now that during the pandemic, I can't go to any shows. It's kind of died oh. out, but you know. You don't do, you don't do like uh, stories where you make videos about like commentary or or what where are they now kinds of things. Uh, that's a bit of a reach. Uh, I have done other like special like videos and stuff, but it's it's really like the the stuff that uh, really kind of got me known was for posting like a lot of the matches and stuff. You know, so, uh, but yeah, like I eventually I gotta, you know, I've been so like focused on this book and everything. It's really just, uh, finding time for other stuff has been really rough, <laughs> you know? Oh, I can only imagine. And you know, that channel's kind of like, it's not monetized or anything because YouTube shenanigans. So oh. it's, it's the, the emphasis for me to kind of want to go back to it as much and not really try and grow this channel it hasn't really been there but eventually you know especially when i when i can get back to doing shows and stuff i'll, I'll get more like traction on it but it's, it's still doing well still got like 5400 subs so nice that's pretty that's pretty good yeah so yeah, guys, if you're a fan of pro wrestling, go check that out. I do have a bunch of videos there. It's called Indie Wrestling Matters. Indie Wrestling Matters? Yep. If you go to YouTube, you'll do the search. And, uh... How did you spell indie? I N D I E. Oh no, it's I I N D Y. Oh, like Indiana Jones. Yeah. Or Indiana. Indie wrestling. Um, is it all one word? I don't know. It should just be try scrolling down a bit. Uh, I did have an issue with the name, so maybe there's no. There it goes right there. Oh, all right. Yep. Oh. Drawing aces. Yeah, the uh, the intro to the uh, drawing aces channel. <laughs> oh, okay. Now that was related to this book. All right, so this is your wrestling one. Yeah. Five point. I did. I start putting some like the the promo for like the the comic book on. So. The librarian. Five K subs. Well, do you say you're not monetized on this one? Uh, no, not anymore. They kind of took it away. Why? Ah, uh, you know, YouTube shenanigans. <laughs> Oh, that's, a, that's, that's crazy. I mean, you got way, way, way over yeah. the requirements. You know, like uh, it's one of those things where they say, you know, when you think you got the answer, they change the question. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's YouTube, man. If you think you don't make any money off them, <laughs> you're surprised. But yeah, I don't want to delete a bunch of videos and stuff. and. Right, yeah, and stuff. So I'm like, screw it. You know what? I'm trying to go my 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 John Aces channel. I'll keep this one on the side, and when when the wrestling starts back, maybe I'll mess around and try and get 
be monetized again, but I'm not gonna stress over it. Oh, I don't know how we missed this, but Gothic Art is saying we need to do an Egyptian conspiracy stream next. Exactly. <laughs> you know, me, once me and Brandon start our own podcast on Spotify, we will reveal all the secrets. Mm. Too funny. All right. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, go ahead and everybody up to both his channels, uh, especially if you're into wrestling. Uh, I dropped the links in the channel. Uh, if you're interested in getting t-shirts, pick those up from uh, the Zade Comics merch store. It's called, it's called Zade Workshop on X, Etsy. S, yeah, Etsy. Yeah. Um, I almost called it ST. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am going to give you the floor. Uh do me the honor and share with the world how you can be found on social media. Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter at Edwin Aces. Nice and simple. Uh, I do have a Drawn Aces Facebook profile. Uh, I don't know why. I, I despise Facebook, but, you know, <laughs> I'm there trying to promote and make connections. So you can follow me and I'll follow you back and you, know, you can keep up with the latest news of the ace. Uh, like I said, mostly uh, I'm on YouTube when I'm not on Twitter. I'm on the hard line every Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern on Zade Comics. Uh, we'll be giving you breaking Egypt news and uh, sneak peeks at the ace every Monday. So check that out. Uh, on my Drawn Aces channel, I do the watch along stream with uh, Sim, uh, Michael Beacon, Mark Middleton. We watch uh, different movies and give your thoughts on it. We're doing one Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern, so join us for that. And the then Sunday, yeah. Is the name of the movie is called Sunday? No, we're doing the stream on Sunday. Oh, all right, all right, gotcha. Yeah, it's so Sunday 10 p.m. And then we do the uh, pimp stream, pimp your project stream on Fridays, uh, 10 p.m. We might be doing a late one this week. I'll keep everybody updated. Because of work shenanigans, uh, you know, they don't understand. Have I have a YouTube schedule to keep up? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The important things in life, yeah. you know, the job, I need to stream on YouTube. So, yeah. Yeah. if What's we have to change it, push it back, we'll push it back an hour. It'll yeah, be fine. This middling from this yeah. thing of work. Right. You're like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> I have comic books to promote and YouTube streams to launch, man. Exactly. That's what That's I'm what trying I'm to do, about. man. Us. So yeah, guys, you can follow me there. Thank you for having me on. Oh, uh, I really appreciate, it, brother. Absolutely, great having you. Now you can find me on. Uh, oh, let's go back to your your one page here. Yes. And if I don't stress this enough, please sign up for the mailing list. Yeah. You'll get a very badass trading card that nobody else will ever get. A complete 100% exclusive when you sign up and back. You'll want it, trust me. Yeah, that training card is not going to be re replicated or duplicated. Nope, free. not going to be sold, nothing. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to burn all the extra copies. <laughs> no, I won't. But <laughs> I'll leave them for like friends and stuff, but nobody, nobody uh, that doesn't know me in real life will ever get one of these cards. So. <laughs> This is yeah. your only chance. It's definitely going to make it a collectible, that's for yeah. sure, by having such a small run. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can uh, find me. Yeah, getting on the sign up list. Uh, and don't forget when you sign up on these, uh, you know, pre launch pages for Indiegogo, you're going to get an email in your mailbox. Double check your junk folder just in case as well if you don't see it initially. And be sure and do that. Uh, click on the link to confirm that you do want to join this list so you don't miss out. Um, you can find me on Facebook and YouTube under Wise Guys Entertainment. You can find me on Twitter at Wise Guys Tweets, Twitch on Wise Guys Twitches, uh, Instagram at Wise Guys Now, Parlay on Wise Guys Entertainment. 
Oh, actually, no. Wise guys parlays. Yeah. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Mark the bell for notifications. So hopefully, YouTube actually tells you when there's a new stream or new video on the channel. Please take a moment to drop some comments in the chat below. Let us know what your favorite part of the ACE is. What are you most excited about? Uh, thank you to everyone in the chat for joining us today. Greatly appreciate your support. Um, it helps us create more content for the channel. Uh, thank you to everyone who watches us on replay. And thank you especially to our special guest, uh, Edwin Acevedo. We are going to end the broadcast in three, two,